All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of the Chinese Chung 3 Lunar Lander and U2 Lunar Rover. And I'm going to apologize right off the bat here, folks, for any mispronunciations, but I, I don't know Chinese, so that's probably going to happen today. But yes, this lovely little mod is being made by forum user 54ZNZN, who you may remember was also the creator of the Tian Gong Space Station parts mod we looked at not too long ago, and he is back with yet another lovely Chinese craft, this time in the form of the uh, lunar lander and rover that China sent to the moon back in 2013, I believe. But yes, let's go jump right into the VAB and have a gander at the lovely parts that this does add into the game. And I'm going to warn you guys off the bat here, this is still early development for this mod. So there are a few oddities with things here and there, one of which being lag here in the VAB. Whenever I've actually taken this craft out uh, to the launch pad or to the moon, it's been perfectly fine. But for some reason here in the VAB, these command pods, especially here, they kind of lag things, and I can't figure out why. But let's take a look at the first one here. This is the uh, U2 command pod, which is for the U2 lunar rover. And this is a lovely little robotic rover probe core, which you slap some wheels and some solar panels onto, and it is good to go along the uh, lunar surface, which is quite fun. Now, of course, it is an unmanned command pod. does have built-in data transmission capabilities, SAS, and a pretty substantial battery at 1200 electric charge and what's quite fun on it it has two extendable parts the first is the uh, little sensor array here which you can see we can extend that with the a1 it just pops up and then with a2 we get these little antennae that come out the back quite cool now overall the modeling on this thing is great Gorgeous. I actually really like the detail put into it. You got all the different pieces back here, uh, the cool little sensor array up in the front. Uh, the texturing definitely could use some work still, but uh, again, uh, this is the early development of this mod, so I'm I'm sure with how good 54ZNZN made the Tian Gong space station parts look, I'm sure these will turn out looking much better texture-wise later. But for the models, very very good text or uh, modeling work done to them. Good Good detail on it, I quite enjoy it. Now we have the other command pod here, which is the uh, Chunga 3 Lunar Lander Core, and this, oh boy, this is the one that really lags the game. There we go, this is of course the main lander body for the mission, and this of course can have the legs that are built in retracted right here, always good. We also do have the tracks here to allow the rover to come off of it, which we can turn on and off with that, and they just sort of scrape along the ground. Uh, another thing that does need to be fixed with it, I'll, I'll show you guys uh, when we're actually out on the lunar surface with this, but because of how this track comes out, it has a tendency to tip the whole body of the lander back a little bit, which may be just enough to make the rover slide off the back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can counteract it once we're on the uh, lunar surface there. And then finally, we also do have this uh, floor body right here rises up if we use this up Chang'e here which pops it right up, and that will raise the rover into position, its wheels resting on these uh, little rails so that you can then go down. Now, as for how you actually get the rover out of this thing, if we put this back down, this attachment point where we attached this base to the rover is actually its own built-in decoupler, which does have a decoupler force of one, and so that is what you actually just attach the rover directly to this little pylon there in the center and you're good to go you don't have to worry about any other separators or you know, decouplers what have you but as for the lander body itself again an unmanned command pod uh, its landing legs do have quite a bit of force that they can handle which is always good it also has a reaction wheel SAS a decent battery not quite as substantial as the rover but it does have a thousand electric charge in it and also does hold liquid fuel and oxidizer and monopropellant now on the liquid fuel, it's 100.4, oxidizer 122.8, and monopropellant 150. And this will allow you to maneuver this thing around in space as 
it does have its own engine. So now to the next tab where we have the engine for the lunar lander bit, which we just pop right down there. Very nice, looks good. And this is a decent little engine with a thrust of 65 kilonewtons roughly in atmosphere, vacuum of 75, engine ISP at 270 atmosphere, 309 vacuum, and consumes a, a hefty little bit of amount of fuel at 2.228 per second liquid fuel, 2.723 per second on the oxidizer. It does have its own built-in gimbling, which is always good, so you can't get a decent amount of control out of this thing. And overall, it's, it's a pretty decent little engine engine enough for this whole thing to land safely on the lunar surface, which is always a good thing. Now in the next section here we have in the command and control where we have the RCS thrusters for this particular lander. And if we go to force symmetry and angle snap, they just fit right here on these corners and you have a nice little bit of RCS. And it's quite useful having the two nozzles facing downward here. Notice we have no up upward facing nozzles just downward which uh is useful because when i was playing around with this earlier and landing it on the moon i actually ran out of fuel because i miscalculated and uh was able to soften my landing with the rcs surprisingly it worked out quite nicely for me which is always good probably not the intended use but hey it worked out so uh the next and final tab we'll be using is utility where we find first off here the solar panels for the lander and these you're going to want to put to two symmetry and uh, angle snap of course and they go right along the sides here and they extend downwards like this so once you do have them extended boom there we go creating a lovely little almost house shape for your rover very cool indeed now the next two pieces that we have in here are for the rover themselves if we actually ditch the rest of the lander here because uh, it'll just be a lot easier. The first is the wheels for the rover, and this, this is my biggest pet peeve on this mod right now, because the wheels, we actually need to turn off angle snap to them and also go back to just one symmetry, so basically no symmetry, and you have to one by one place these wheels on these little bars that you see here. So we got one bar at the end, another bar right here in the middle, and one on the front. And you have to painstakingly put them onto each, lining them up, because if we do turn on symmetry mode, it is gonna put that wheel in the back, and as you can see, it's not quite symmetrical. So these bars are not in symmetrical positions to one another. So you could probably get away with the middle one doing that. Let's actually see there. Actually, no, even that one's a little bit off. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, symmetry mode just doesn't work. You have to do this by hand, one by one. So placing all six wheels individually on their respective little bar there. Uh, overall, they're pretty good wheels. They have a pretty darn high tolerance uh, to them. I've had this thing driven off of the uh, landing or the launch pad. There's the word out there. And the wheels were perfectly fine, whereas many others tend to break. So they're quite good. It, they do use a decent little bit of amount of electrical charge and usage, but overall with the solar panel, which is the last bit we need to look at here, you really shouldn't have any power issues with this rover. So right here is the YT solar panels, and that just slams right on the top there, and the point of this is it extends outward, which then, so that this uh, main sensor body can pop up. So the solar panels, of course, would be closed up during flight. Then you open up the solar panel, then bring out the sensor array, and you're good to go. And that, that's what you need. Now, let us exit out of here and actually head over to the lunar surface where I have one of these all set up and good to go so we can check it out in usage on the moon. Oh god, where did it go? <laughs> Oh, uh, I must have accidentally reverted to a previous save. I do apologize, folks. Let's act... Oh, God, I actually know exactly when I did it. I decided to load on another one of these onto the landing pad and reverted back to a quick save, which was before I landed one of these on the moon with hyper edit. <laughs> Ah, uh, good times, good times. I should have double-checked that before I started recording. But oh well, hyper-edit, here we go. So let's put it on to the moon, because, well... 
that that's what this thing's made for. So let's go to right there. You never want to use hyperedit to go straight to landing. That's um <laughs> that's usually a very, very bad thing. So set to current and about fifty. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're, we should be good, we should be good. So let's just land this thing, and we should be good to go. Though it is slightly on an incline, but yeah, that'll work just fine for us. Let's actually get this thing down a bit more. There we go, beautiful. That should be plenty for us to land. And yes, this is what the thing looks like when fully constructed. We have the rover all set up and good to go in there. We have our uh, landing legs out, our little uh, rails set and good to go for to be extended. Let's, though, power up this slightly so we can get to a flatter surface. This is probably going to end horribly for me. There we go, quick saving, and just throttle ourselves up. It would help to actually activate the engine. There we go, just a tiny bit of throttle to get us down towards the surface, where it's a bit flatter down there. Which would be ideal. Oh god, too high, too high. <laughs> I'd rather not crash this thing. Oh boy. There we go, and just slide down a bit more. <laughs> uh, a little bit of a behind the scenes look today, folks. Typically I try to make sure I do all of this beforehand, but oh well, sometimes things don't go quite to plan. And we're almost to a flatter surface. Kind of odd that we are sort of just sort of sliding. <laughs> okay, okay, a little, little tiny bit more. And almost. Which you guys have been asking in the comments to see more of me doing this. So, hey, I'm sure you may enjoy this? Question mark? <laughs> Alright, there we go. Excellent. We are on a flat surface. Let's turn on our brakes here. Now, a couple of things before we release the rover. One, like I said, when we do extend the track, it sometimes has a tendency to tip this back a bit. Two... If it doesn't tip the rover back, it sometimes loses physics on traction on the rails once we raise this platform. So those are two things to keep in mind. And again, mods still in development. So just, just bear with that, folks. <laughs> so what we want to do is first extend the track. There we go. And, yep, as you can see, it did slightly tip back just a tiny amount, which is enough to roll the rover back if I didn't have the brakes on. So we should be good, though. So let us first decouple the rover. So space bar. And then, of course, we need to go back to the lander and raise the platform. There we are. Excellent. Back to the rover. Extend our panels extend the sensor array and the little antennae and let's hope we didn't lose physics this time again it happens sometimes other times we're fine and yes sadly we've lost the physics as you can see i'm moving forward and nothing's happening it seems to do that to me about 50 percent of the time that i've uh, gone to use this mod uh, but oh well we have hyper edits so we can always fix this by set to current just add like Change that to a two. And there we go. That was a little bit further than I wished to go, but oh well. <laughs> Alright, a little bit more. Excellent. We'll be landing quite nicely on the lunar surface here. And at this lap, just close. We're good. Beautiful. Now that we aren't on the sometimes physics canceling platform, we can now drive this thing around. Now it is a little bit slidey because of the gravity, because this thing doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it, but it does function as a pretty darn good little rover there. And of course, with the solar panels, we tend to get some pretty good power to it, so we can keep going for quite a while. It does seem to be slightly hovering at the moment, but I think that's more of the moon's fault. <laughs> Oh, good times. But yes, once you do have it off of the platform, again, sometimes it loses physics, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see if we can actually drive up that thing this now, and because once that happens, we seem to be typically good. Okay, okay. We are on a slight incline, which makes it difficult. And slow. Approach it a bit more carefully. And we're not on the rail. 
<laughs> okay, okay, okay. And forward. Yeah, this rover wasn't exactly designed to go back onto the rail after it's been launched. Oh, I've broken it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to get back up there, guys. I don't I don't think we're going to get back up there. But yes, this <laughs> <laughs> this is the Chinese Chung 3 Lunar Lander and U2 Lunar Rover. Overall, a very good little package. I like seeing more Chinese spacecraft coming in here because, of course, they've been making more and more strides into space in the recent decade. So it's good to see them being more represented besides just NASA and Soviet stuff in here. So I would definitely say to check it out, even with the few little oddities, uh, you should still have a good time with it. And at the very least, you know, have some more parts to play around with in the game. So yes, if you would like to check this out for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as always. But I do hope that you have enjoyed this episode today, even with my, uh, Oh, minor mistakes here. But, oh well, I hope you have enjoyed that you do come back for the next when we will be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one. <laughs>